So here's the ever popular Trachycarpus wagnerianus. This palm is becoming more popular with time. Uh, it wasn't quite as readily available as uh, the regular Fortunae. I would say it is of the same level of cold hardiness, uh, zone 8 no problem, even maybe into some areas of zone 7. Uh, people like this one because unlike the Fortunae, the fronds are very stiff. They don't damage in the wind, so these are good palms to plant in areas with, with much higher wind. Um, you can kind of see this Fortuna here. That's what happens over time with some of them. It's a little bit of a messier looking palm. Some people feel that it's just a variety or um, a version of a Fortuna that they haven't been able to find this in the wild. I believe this came from some monasteries in Asia. But this palm here, there goes my dog. <laughs> this palm here is actually becoming quite popular because it has a little bit more of an architectural look. They don't quite seem to get as, as big as the Fortunae. They grow slower. Um, they don't take up as much space. So, they're used a lot in this area in Asian style gardens. Um, Japanese gardens here are quite popular and this is one of the palms that does get used in quite a bit. Um, they will readily hybridize with regular Fortunae and then you get what a lot of people call hybrid uh, palms. I guess it all depends on whether or not this is a distinct species. I do, I have found that they do grow slower. I got this one actually this uh, past winter. And it was living in my garage. I didn't want to plant it out in in the middle of winter. I thought I'd wait till spring. So I popped it in here and it's uh, it was actually in a 24 inch box and it's not a big palm. So it had a massive, massive root ball. So when I stuck it in the ground uh, about a month ago, it just exploded. It's uh, already put out two fronds. You can see the two dark green ones. And it's got two spears and working. Um, I do have another one that I've had for a while. Uh, I had this one as a very small palm and it's coming along quite nicely. It, it, it's got uh, maybe a foot of trunk. <clears throat> and this one's kind of pumping along too. This one was in a lot of shade. Again, this spot was uh, covered by a large Norway maple. Now it's getting a little more sunshine. It's quite moist here, the soil. so. I've noticed it started uh, picking up speed. So we'll see, uh, you know, you have male and female of both. Um, I do not know what these are. They're too small, they have not flowered yet. And I have to be careful um, if I wanted to get true uh, waggy, they call them waggies, uh, waggies, I would have to protect the female flowers because I do have two big Fortunae right here that actually look a lot different. Um, the one on the right is a very, very dark green. It's got much stiffer fronds. This one almost looks like it might have some waggy in it. And this Fortunae is my most yellow of all of them. And I, I can't figure it out. I have been fertilizing it with palm game, but. And then down here, I have a small Trachycarpus tequil. So um, between the two different looking for two knives, the two waggies and the tequil. Um, I could end up with quite a, a lot of interesting uh, mixes. And in back here as well, I have more down here. I have uh, another dozen for two knives that are starting to get some size. And then I have a small triple back there that's starting to uh, take off. So once they start producing seed, I don't think there's any way I can really um, prevent any sort of uh, hybridization. Anyway, let's go back to the waggy for one last few. Thanks for watching.